Good afternoon, guys. Keith Engel for TGI Sports Talk. Another quick vlog here for you today. And today we're going to concentrate on the 2020 uh, Masters and the importance of Lee Elder uh, being one of the honorary starters along with Jack Nicholson and Gary Player. Uh, you know, it's going to be a much different uh, tournament this year. Let's start with the tournament itself. Um, we're playing this tournament in mid November. Uh, as opposed to the first week in April, which is going to make a difference in, in potentially the way the course plays. Many of us have never seen the course played in November. Obviously, it does get played. Some of these players likely have played at this time of year. Um, but I'm sure the course will play differently than it plays in April. Uh, no blooming azaleas. The course is going to look different to a lot of us on TV than it has in the past. Um, no crowds huge impact on the, on the tournament itself. Tiger Woods has been quoted as saying it'll be so much different for him that it'll be a weird experience because he's one of those that feeds off the crowd. And many and many of the accomplished pros do feed off the energy of the crowd. So, you know, there's a school of thought that the low energy levels, maybe there's been low energy levels um, on the PGA Tour, even in the major championships this year that have lacked um, public participation. So we'll see if that becomes a factor in the Masters. Tiger talked about how the fact that you could hear anywhere on the course when a birdie or an eagle was made, um, if it, whether it was made by a, a, a Tiger Woods or a Jack Nicholas, you would know it because the crowds would just erupt. And there was a difference between the birdie and the eagle roars. And I found that insight very uh, interesting, to be honest with you, and, and that it would hurt a Tiger Woods and some of the players that really, maybe a Phil Nicholson that really feed off crowd energy. Some players, maybe it will not affect. Uh, Colin Morikawa, uh, Kawi, who, who won the, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name, um, who won the PGA uh, Championship. There's a school of thought that he um, benefited from the fact that there were no crowds and it eased the pressure on him as, as uh, that tournament wore on and he was in fact uh, in a position to win it. So how the different players handle the fact that there's no crowd there will be quite interesting. And, and certainly it'll be a different watch for those of us watching it on TV. Um, so, you know, as far as the players, you know, Bryson uh, DeChambeau is probably the, the the favorite along with Dustin Johnson, John Rahm. My personal favorite is going to be Rory McIlroy this weekend. But I think, you know, there's probably, a, uh, you know, a tank, who knows? I mean, the, the, the winner could come from anywhere, I think, this weekend because of the dynamics how the course will play differently in November than in April. And also, again, the effect of there being no crowd, either negatively on a certain players and positively for some others. We'll see. Um, that's why we play the tournament. Uh, the second thing I'd like to talk on, again, I, I will tell you again, I'm picking um, Roy McIlroy myself. So we'll see how that comes out later. You can hold me accountable for that. As you know, for my football picks, I have not been doing very well in the, in the prediction area this, uh, this fall. Um, secondly, Lee Elder finally getting his due uh, from the Masters. If you don't know, uh, Lee Elder was the first. Uh, to break the color barrier of playing in the Masters in 1975. Lee has won, I believe, 16 uh, professional tournaments in his career. He won. He's in his 80s now, so he's not competing professionally anymore, obviously. Um, and he played in six Masters and finished in the top 25 twice. But in 1975, this was a, a big thing, right? And, and leading up to that tournament, Lee was getting hate mail. Lee was getting death threats. and you know, he was, he talked to reporters who wanted to know why he was willing to put himself through this and, um, you know, how he would be able to compete against the others. He just simply said, I belong in this field. So those words still ring true today. Um, there's a great article in the New York Post today uh, from Mark uh, Canizario, um regarding this very topic. I really uh, would recommend you get out there and read it. But Lee Elder being part of this, uh, he's never been really recognized for the, his uh, role in breaking the color barrier at, at uh, Augusta. I mean, they have had their problems with race relations through the years in the course, uh, not just race, but with women as well. 
Um, they're making strides. Fred Ridley was asked about the impact and he felt at the time and this year, especially with everything going on, uh, not to make this a, a political statement necessarily, because it is something that is duly elder regardless of the situation we're in, in my opinion, um, that this was the right time to do it. Um, he feels that the club has made some strides um, in diversity when it comes to minorities and women, um, you know, but feels they still have, uh, there's still a work in progress, you know, and, and of course, when asked for numbers, you know, the, the club was not uh, forthcoming and in, in how many minorities or women uh, members there were, and the school thought it's, you know, the, the, the white men still outweigh the, uh, the minorities or women um, or people that fall into both of those categories uh, by far. But again, they're making strides. There wasn't that many years ago, relatively speaking, you know, that there were no people of color. Um, you know, there were no white men on the grounds unless they were working in the kitchen or working on the grounds as groundskeepers or, or you know, or whatever, you know, other menial jobs you might want to think about. So they've made strides through the years, obviously, and uh, hopefully they continue to do so. But the, the we can't lose sight, and I think it's very important that Lee Elder is getting his due, not just this year, but he should be. A, he should have been recognized in, long before this. We're talking about 45 years ago he broke the color barrier at the Masters, and it was an important story then. Um, he had to persevere through a lot uh, leading up to his uh, first uh, competitive round at Augusta. And he should be commended for that. And he should be recognized for that. Um, also, uh, Fred Ridley, again, who is the, uh, whatever, the chairman of Augusta. I'm not sure exactly his title, but he is the guy who runs the show. Uh, he was asked about whether this would now be a yearly, um, a yearly thing, that Lee Elder would be invited back uh, to play or to hit that honorary first shot with Jack and Gary player, um, you know, on an ongoing basis. And he said, no, it's just for this year. And it's something that I think should be a yearly event. Again, it's been 40, um, but I'd say 45 years since Lee Elder really broke through this barrier and it should be recognized on a continuing basis, I think. And uh, it's important for Augusta to continue to recognize it as they try, as they strive to do better with their diversity issues. Again, this is something that uh, in the year 2020, we would think would not be a problem, but as we've seen recently um, in the news, uh, you know, we're not where we should be, obviously, uh, throughout this entire country. Um, there's certainly better places, some places that are better than others, and places like Augusta National need to lead the way uh, in these situations, I think. And they've taken a good step. Uh, they've made some strides, as I said, over the years. This and having Lee Elder be part of this honorary uh, foursome that tees, tees off, well, it'll be a threesome, um, I think is, is, is a great acknowledgement to Lee Elder and what he's meant to the game of golf um, and to uh, people of color through the years. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, the, the world of golf is much more diverse than it was in 1975 for sure. And Lee Elder uh, holds, you know, a, a high, uh, a high plateau in, in that coming to be. So I congratulate Lee Elder. I applaud Augusta National for making him one of the honorary starters this year. And let's just hope it's the beginning of uh, something really beautiful. So we look forward to a great golf tournament, um, starting with that honorary uh, uh, tee off by Lee Elder, along with Jack Nicholson, Gary Player. And we look for some great golf. Some of the, the greatest golfers in the world are a part of this weekend. And it's always fun for me because you know, some of the old guys get a chance. Freddie Couples always seems to come out and play well in this tournament. You get to see the Bernard Longers. You get to see, uh, I think, some of the other guys, older guys that are old past champions that are still there. Unfortunately, you know, they started to get older. Obviously, Phil's there, and Phil's always got a puncher's chance in these tournaments. Um, 
DJ Singh is another name that stands out. Then there's guys, unfortunately, probably won't have a chance. Jose Marie Olathabo, uh, Sandy Lyle, Larry Mize, they're all past champions that probably don't have a chance this, this weekend. But you never know. You've seen it. Uh, weekend, uh, not weekend, but year in and year out, there's always somebody from that group who comes in place. Often it's Freddie Couples who will play well for two and a half, three days. And it's hard for those guys to put it together for four days on a, on a really good course like at Augusta National. They're not playing the Champions Tour tees here. So we'll see. It'll be exciting. Again, uh, your, your favorites are the people you would think them to be. Uh, Brooks Kep, uh, Kepka, uh, Roy McElroy, Justin Thomas, John Rahm, uh, Justin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau. Um, my pick among those is going to be Rory. And let's see what happens. I have, I've enjoyed talking to you today for a few minutes. Hope you watch. Hope you uh, read Mark uh, Cannizzaro's article in the New York Post today. It's a great article. And I hope you will uh, tune in and pay attention to the historic uh, uh, events that will take place around the Masters this year, not just on the course uh, because of the of bus not playing until November, but of the of the the meaning of Lee Elder actually being there and being part of this uh, honorary uh, tee off. So we'll see you at the Masters. We'll see you uh, tomorrow on Mac and Jack, and uh, we'll see you at uh, on my show on Friday morning. We'll see you when we see you. TGI Sports Talk and Keith Engel. Have a great one. Bye-bye.